Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz. It's Mary, and I'm here with 90 Days and 900 Seconds, Happily Ever After, Season 7, Episode 15, Battlefield. And I'm telling you guys, getting through the season feels like going through a battlefield. If I was going to give this episode a grade, I would give it a D minus because I'm telling you these days, happily ever after is serving as nap time for me. I keep finding myself dozing off. It is taking me at least two to three tries each episode to get through the whole thing. Matt Sharp, you got to do better. This is coming from a long time fan season one, episode one. And now my favorite show is turning into nap time. Got to do better, Matt. You got to do better. So let me set my timer for 900 seconds. And we're going to hop right into it. So here we go. We're going to start with Kim and Usman. Jamal is going with Kim to Nigeria and he's finally going to meet Usman in person and Kim is nervous and excited because she needs the two main men in her life to get along and Jamal's like you know you're not going to force me to like him I'm going to try but I have to see how he's going to act in person and you know Jamal is not crazy about this whole adoption plan to say the least. I mean, we're all not crazy about this adoption plan, to say the least. But they're going to Nigeria. If they get there, Usman is like an excited kid in the airport. He's like, yay, they're here. So they get back to the resort. And Usman is like, okay, Jamal, I have a gift for you. And they blindfold him. And they hand him a wrapped gift. Now, there was a tweet about this. But I was thinking this during the scene. Why are you blindfolding him if the gift is wrapped? But anyway, guess what the gift was, guys? A PS5. I almost fell on the floor. I'm like, Usman, did you re-gift the PS5 that Kimberly gave you? I know you re-gifted that PS5 and, you're, and you're, you are giving it to Jamal. I was on the floor. No one cannot convince me that he did not re-gift that PS5. So anyway... So then um, they go to meet Jamal's, they go to meet Usman's friends. I'm sorry. Jamal, Kim, and Usman go to meet his friends. And um, they're talking about the adoption plan. Guys, Usman's brother doesn't even know about it. Usman hasn't even talked to him about it. So Kimberly is in Nigeria with Jamal to go meet this little boy, to meet Usman's brother and his wife, talk about adopting the kid but Usman hasn't even talked to his brother about it first isn't this typical Usman Kim is like are you flicking kidding me like I'm gonna kill you you know his friend is like you know this happens in Nigeria all the time he's telling Jamal this happens all the time people adopt you know their brother's kids their siblings children to keep it in the bloodline all the time but Kimberly's like you didn't talk to your brother first so, and then they show, you know, a clip for like next week's coming attractions and they show, um, they show Usman's brother sitting there with the child and the brother, the wife and the child basically have this, all the same expression on their face. Like what the fuck is going on? It's actually pretty hysterical. So moving on to... Another hysterical scene that was unintentionally hysterical. Angela and Michael, okay? So now we start off where we left last week. Angela's apologizing to Billy for Michael storming away. She's like, I'm so sorry. Oh my goodness, I'm embarrassed, whatever. And we all know if the roles were reversed, Angela would have took the phone, snapped it in half, threw it in the pool, beat the crap out of Michael. But instead, she's sitting there apologizing profusely to Billy as her husband, you know, stomped the way to the room. So then she was like, all right, Billy, I'm going to let you go. I love you. I love you. I love you. Good night. Then she goes after Michael. 
And so Michael's in the room, Michael's fuming. He's like, you know, this is ridiculous. She's going to go to Canada for this guy. And then Angela comes in the room and he's like, seriously, what are you going to do for this guy? You know, he's a kidney failure. Are you going to give him your kidney? Like, what are you going to do for him to make him better? And Angela's like, I I'm going to go to Canada and I'm going to help him get better. You know, that's it. And Michael's like, no, I'm not going to accept this as your husband. And he's like putting his foot down and well, and we're all like, wow, he's actually putting his foot down. And it, this would be a meaningful scene if Angela's hair pieces were been hanging in the fucking background. This is why this scene was unintentionally hysterical. Okay. And Mike was like, you know, I, I don't like this. If you go to Canada, I'm done. And, and, and Angela, I mean, the way she just looked in the scene, she was like a dried up raisin. I don't like to, you know, look shame people, but I mean, this is Angela we're talking about. And she spent all this money on this makeover. Stop smoking and get a facelift, okay? Get all that sagging skin taken care of already, please. She looks horrible. Oh my goodness. And then these hair pieces are hanging in the background. It's like, what the fuck and then she's like you know something Michael even though you put me through hell and you broke my heart a hundred times I didn't come to Nigeria to lose my husband so if you don't want me to go to Canada I won't look at mama look at mama I'm not going to Canada come to mama and of course Next thing you know, they're under the covers making noises that you don't want to hear. So uh, then, you know, everything's okay. And then Michael gets text. Dun, dun, dun. Peter, as in Peter the goofball. Do you remember the goofball got the goofballs, guys? Well, Peter texts Michael to ask him if Angela would like to come out for a drink with him and Adi, two of the three goofballs. And guess what? Last season, when Angela had her flip out and threw her drink on the goofballs, we interviewed two out of the three goofballs. So go check out our channel and check out our interview with the goofballs and listen to what they had to say about when they met Angela for the first time. So now they're going to meet up with her again. And you know what I have to say? Bring on the goofballs. So moving on, we have Shaila and Bilal. And I can't even take this anymore. Like this is like, uh, <laughs> So they go on a helicopter ride around New York City, around my beautiful city. And they're on the helicopter for about 2.5 seconds before Shida brings up babies. And I get it why Bilal would be annoyed because they're on this helicopter ride of a lifetime. Like not many people get the opportunity to ride a helicopter around New York City. I've lived in the city for all 48 years of my life and I haven't gotten the opportunity to ride a helicopter around the city. But she's in a helicopter for about 2.5 seconds and she brings up babies. But that being said, he did not have to turn around, you know, while they were waiting for their Uber and say to her, basically, pull the Janet Jackson line, what have you done for me lately? Because the last time I checked Bilal, the, the woman has left her family. She has left her friends, her business, her country, and a bunch of other things, uh, her house, I'm sure possessions, to come to a foreign country to be with you. So um, that's what she has done for you lately. Ugh. So Shida basically tells him that she needs a timeline for the baby. 
Like she is giving him a baby ultimatum. So Bilal's like, what a great way to ruin a romantic moment. And they go off to meet Uterus. So Bilal drops off Shida in Central Park to meet Uterus. And Shida basically tells her, you know, I gave him the ultimatum. I gave him the baby ultimatum. And Uterus is like, is having a baby so important that you are willing to lose your spouse? And Shida's like, yes. He has nine months to impregnate me starting right now. Right now, nine months from this moment or I'm walking away. Let's see. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. So moving on. We have Ed and Liz, which we learn a few things about Liz. First of all, Liz's ex has primary, primary custody and she sees her daughter from time to time. Secondly, her ex is getting restationed outside of the U.S. And thirdly, she wants to go back to work full time so she could be financially independent. The next scene, she's going house hunting with Ed, but they don't bother to ask how much the house is before they go see it. And then he realizes that 1.5 million it is way above his budget. At this point, I think I dozed off, tuned out. After the third try, I gave up on them. And that's all I re really remember because the, th this is bullshit. They're annoying the fuck out of me. And I cannot wait until the season's over so I don't have to watch them anymore. So that's basically what happened with them. So moving on, we have Jovi and Yara. Hey, yay, 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 yay. I mean, Yara's annoying the fuck out of me too. So they're walking, um, I guess, in downtown, wherever they are in Germany. And she's like, everything is so beautiful here. Look at these buildings. I want to take pictures of all these buildings. Jovi's not having it. Jovi couldn't give a flying fuck about the buildings. Jovi is annoyed AF. So Yara's like, what's wrong with you? And, you know, it, Joby's like all this stuff about, you know, you staying here in Europe and, uh, you, you know, you're not taking my feelings, not taking my opinion into consideration. And Yara just turns around and tells him, you know, Joby, I moved to the U.S. to be with you because I love you. I respect you. I am miserable in the U.S. So could you do me one favor do something small for me and let me stay in Europe without any drama so I could be happy in my freaking life. Well, that sounds like a huge sacrifice, Yara, considering that Jovi deserves some happiness too. And I'm not a fan of Jovi, but marriage is supposed to be a compromise 50-50. And I think if you were to stay in Europe, that would not make Jovi happy. So um, we need to figure something out here. So... Jovi's um Jovi solution and this is why I'm not a fan let's have another baby and to Yara's credit she's like what the fuck is wrong with you how is having another baby a solution to all this but Yara's you know reasoning is I I just started working I want to continue working I'm the one that's going to be raising both of them by myself Jovi's going to be off working what is wrong with him he's crazy so, this is where Yara annoys me. She talks about that this trip, that she wants to help her Ukrainian people, help the victims of war, help, 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 help. And I understand that they can only so, so, show so much on TV, but they have not shown her helping once, and we are on episode 15. Her and Katrina are spa day swimming in a pool in the snow. Yes, you heard that right. It is snowing and these two chicks are swimming in a pool like polar bears. So they're basically complaining about Jovi and how their Jovi suggests that Yara ha have a second baby. 
And of course, then we cut to the scene where Jovi, who has a half a brain, is sitting inside with his friend TC drinking beer, complaining that Yara doesn't give a shit about his happiness anymore. And she's all about her happiness and what she wants. And TC's like, yeah, man, I know it's a fucked up situation. So that's where we are with these two. And um, <laughs> I don't know. It's a fucked up situation if it's not a fake storyline. But I have a feeling everything is fine with these two. So moving on to what I consider is the highlight of this episode and purely because of Jen, the daughter-in-law. The Submit Summit. Jenny and Submit. So the families are getting together. So we have Jenny, her daughter, Christina, her other daughter, Jen, and Summit on one side and Summit's family, his dad, his brother, and his sister-in-law because mom didn't show up. She was too sick and auntie didn't show up for some unknown reason, but mom definitely didn't show up. Oops, time is up. Mom definitely didn't show up because She's sick of all of the insults that are being thrown at her by all of society. Like dad told them, dad was like, listen, you know, I I don't want to hear all this about love and you guys have been together for 10 years because Christina was like, you know, it was nice to meet you guys. And I'm here and I just want to explain to you, we love Samit. We love Samit so much. We consider him part of our family. And our wish is that you would do the same for our mom. You will open up our heart, your hearts to our mom and just, you know, see the love between these two. They've been together for 10 years. Who cares that my mom is, I'm older than your wife, but it, it just, you, you know, just see the love. And Samet's so father's like, do you understand in this society, your society accepts everybody, my society I have people calling me with harsh words, insulting my wife. I mean, you know, this is horrible. And meanwhile, and this is the highlight of the episode, Christina's wife, Jen, is just sitting there. And I swear she was shooting them tasers out of her eyes. Like you are going to submit and accept Jenny and submit or I am going to get up and body slam each and every one of you. John did not say one word throughout this whole conversation, but her eyes said a million. So uh, Christina, you know, tried to plead her case on the behalf of her mom. Samit's father was not having it. She's like, he's like, I don't understand how Christina could accept it. You know, Samit is younger than her, blah, blah, blah. So Jenny's like, you know, that's it. I'm just going to have to take him to America with me. You guys are not going to accept us here. So what do I have to lose? Samit's coming to America. And Samit was like, I cannot believe that she actually said that in front of my family. And her, his brother was like, so Samit, what's the deal? Are you going to America? Dun, dun, dun. So that's all. We'll see what happens next week. Um, we're on episode 15. So we should be reaching the finale with the next couple of couple of episodes. And then we'll have a three-part tell-all. So thank you so much, guys, for watching me. Please subscribe if you don't already. Please hit that like button. And also... I wanted to give you guys a heads up to something very exciting. I just launched a new publication today, wordonthestreetreality.com. Please go check it out. 90 Day Fiance, Love After Lockup, and more. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye.